Okay everyone, back again. Um, the last video that I gave you um, last night, I stopped welding because I was having some issues with my welder. Um, it was quite frankly way too cold in my shop. I've got my Everlast Power iMig 200. It's a great machine, but the fan in this machine is not rated to be at the temperatures or to operate at the temperatures that I was running this thing in the shop last, last night. Um, or the last video, whatever you want to call it. It was about 8 degrees outside, about 20 degrees roughly inside, and the fan's not rated to go down, go down to that low of a temperature, so I was having issues with it. It's a sleeve type bushing in the fan, and it starts having issues. As soon as it warms up, it's fine though. Um, I thought about putting my, my halogen lights next to it, but quite frankly it was late, so I just decided to call it a wrap. The other thing I was having issues with is wire, wire speed. <clears throat> I was having a lot of spatter type spitting and sputtering and it was late and it was cold and I just didn't want to mess with it. Came back out here this morning, was checking out the tip of the welder, was checking my wire speed to make sure that the wire was feeding at the proper speed and it was. So I decided I was going to just change the tip on here. And when I changed the tip I realized that there was actually a piece of metal wedged into the, into the hole there that was causing the wire to burn inside the nozzle versus at the weld. So, change that out, everything's good to go. Um, I just now finished welding this whole thing off. Um, one thing I want to talk to you guys about real quick is this. This is paper thin metal, okay? I don't know what gauge that is. It's really thin, it's got to be thinner than 20 gauge. You know, a lot thinner, maybe 22 gauge. Um, I'm welding that to 3 16 plate. And that's not an easy thing to do um, if you don't know what the heck you're doing. Uh, when you're welding thin metal like that to thick metal, you need to set your welder up for the thick metal, okay? Um, if you don't set it up to run as hot as it needs to to penetrate into the thick metal, it's never going to really grab a hold of it. You'll weld the thin metal, but it will never really penetrate into the thick metal. You set it up so that you're, wel you're melting your thick metal, and this is how you do it. Um, let me grab my pencil real quick here. Assume this is your gun. You're going to point your gun roughly about right here, okay? And you're going to try to lay the bead onto the 3 16 let it build up and the heat, the radiant heat coming off of that is hot enough to heat up this thin metal and what will happen is that weld bead will wick over and grab that thin metal. You might have to coax it a little bit depending on the situation but that's how I did that. It's not the prettiest weld in the world but it definitely has is, is got a hold of both of those and it isn't going anywhere. Okay, I had a few issues with burn through. There was a little bit of a gap on this other side, so I was having a little bit of issues with that. But I got it all completely welded up. There's no pinholes that I'm aware of. Everything's good to go. Um, and that's pretty much it. I've um, got this, this seam welded up. Everything's welded on this so far. Um, I've got to wait for my partner to bring me the rest of the perlite to fill this up. And then I'm going to work on the cover. I'm not going to cover the center hole, but I've got to cover this and seal it up so the perlite doesn't come out. Okay, and in the meantime, because he'll probably be here either tonight or tomorrow, I'm going to work on the cover here. I've got a couple of holes that I burned through while I was cutting off the, the handle off of this tank. Um, I've got to fill those up. I've got to take these two fittings here for the old compressor um, hoses. I've got to weld, fill those welds. Yeah. Fill, fill weld the holes. I don't know, I'm saying that wrong. Or either that or I'm just, my brain's freaking out. <laughs> and then I've got to notch this so it'll fit around the burn chamber. Okay. And what I mean by notching it is the same way I did here. Notch it so it fits around. The thing is that that, that um, compressor tank is not going to be welded to this at all. Okay, that's going to be so it's removable. So I need to make sure that all my gaps are really nice and tight, which means I'm going to probably come in here with a, a grinder and grind this weld down a little bit on both sides so that it's nice and clean. So I, I have a nice clean fitment to, to fit up around here. Um, 
And that's pretty much it. I'm going to try to cut this video short. I'm not going to do any time lapse right now because I'm about ready to take off. Um, I've, I've got about an hour to get some work done and before I go pick up my fiance from work. And then I'll be back and, and here and working again. So I'm going to try to wrap up as much of this as, as absolute possible tonight. And hopefully we can get this thing fired up tomorrow. So um, I'll talk to you guys in a second. I'm going, to sh I'm going to still show you what I finished tonight. I'm just not going to do any time lapse. So talk to you guys in a second. Okay, everyone. So as you can see here, I've made some pretty good progress. Let me minimize my ugly face real quick here. Um, I've got the barrel cut. I'm, I'm probably going to cut a little bit more. As you see here, there's about a quarter inch gap here, and that's fine because um, I was considering cutting the, the lip of this barrel down a little bit. You see how there's a little bit of a gap here? And there's one on the other side as well. <coughs> I want to get rid of that. But most importantly, I want to reduce the the gap between the top of the riser and the top of this barrel. Right now the riser comes to about right here, um, which gives us about three inches to the very peak of the top of this. I'd like to, to lower that a little bit. And if I shave off a quarter inch here, that's only going to help. Uh, the reason why that's important is because if the gap between your riser and the top of your, your barrel, or in this case compressor tank, is too great, the top surface isn't going to get nearly as hot. Okay, the the closer this is to your riser tube, you're going to have a really hot spot here. The further away it is, the more it's going to even out the heat. And what's going to happen with that situation is that you're not going to get that instant radiant heat off of the stove. So you'll you'll still get heat, but it's not going to be as hot. The goal is to get this top piece to about 800 degrees, 7 800 degrees. So um, ideally, from what I've read, that should be about two inches between um, the top of the riser and that. Um, we're a little bit more than that, so I'm gonna, right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start working on the flange. I've decided not to use that ring that's sitting over there. That ring right there. I decided I'm gonna use some flat bar, some one inch by eighth inch flat bar. And I'm going to make a seal around the outside of this. So I'm going to start with this front section here and I'm going to wrap this. And then I'm going to start with a small piece for this rear section here. The reason why I'm going to do those two sections is because I don't want to bump this and have it move. You see I put some, some markings around here. But I don't want to bump it and have it move, especially when I'm doing the side pieces because there's such a curve in it. I'm not going to roll this to, to the curve. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start here, weld it, bend it, tack it, bend it, tack it, and keep going like every inch. Bend, tack, bend, tack. It's thin enough material where that should work. Um, but the problem is, is I'm going to be putting stress on the barrel in its position. So if I support it here in the front and I support it here in the back, it shouldn't move. So that's the goal. That's what I'm going to get working on right now. And I'll be right back when I get some progress done with that, and hopefully we'll be ready to fire this up soon. Um, the only thing left after I make that seal all the way around here will be to, before I can do a test burn, will be to put the exhaust. I'm going to just go ahead and drop it here in the back. Um, and then I've got to um, do a burn basket. So I've got to build a burn basket that'll, that'll burn in there, and then I can get going. <clears throat> um, I could probably test it out with some wood. I've got some little pieces of wood. I could probably do that instead of a burn basket. We'll see. Um, I, might, I might try that just to, just to get it going while I work on the burn basket. Yeah, I actually probably will do that. Um, I'll throw some sticks in here to the top, break them down small enough where um, I can put the cover over it. And then just, just let it burn. Let it burn some of this powder coat off. I'll be wearing my respirator so I hopefully don't die in here. <laughs> and we'll see what happens. So I'll talk to you guys in a quick second. 
Um, when I get to that point, I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys. Again, no time lapse in this, vi in this video. Um, I'm going to just try to get some work done. I need to get this done tonight. So, all right, talk to you guys in a second. Okay, everyone. So, I pretty much can't do anything else right now. Um, I can, but I, I need to go inside and drop the burn basket that I'm going to use inside of here. Um, but as far as the, the cover for this, it's done. Um, I've got some handles welded on it on both sides. Um, I mean, there's cosmetic stuff like grinding all this smooth and everything. Um, but I've got that. Everything fits together nicely. I came back in here and, and sealed up all the gaps with the weld. Um, it's going to work great, but I can't, I can't really do anything else until I get the rest of the perlite and then seal the top of this. Once the top of that's sealed, then we're pretty much ready to start testing. Um, I have to address the exhaust, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that tonight. Um, it's, it's more important that I get a design drawn up for the burn basket than that because I can throw the exhaust together, you know, within an hour. So, um, basically I'm going to create a box that will be welded to that. Um, on that box, I'll cut out a round hole. This will slide into that hole and so that the ductwork can attach to it. But the reason why I'm doing a box versus just sliding this into the, the compressor tank is because if this ever gets burned out or whatever, the box will be heavier metal. This could be easily replaced. Also because we're going to, because this is a prototype, we're going to create some adjustability in that box as well as a clean out too. So it, there's, there's a reason for it to be there in the prototype. Anyway, let me show you guys this. This is the gap I have pretty much all the way around. It varies a little bit, especially towards the front, but that's okay because if you remember in a previous video, I told you that they said to try to keep the riser off center a little bit. So technically, I guess it is. It's a little bit closer to the front, um, but it's still pretty close to center. Um, this is a lip. The compressor tank slides inside of here. Um, which is the proper way because the airflow is coming out the top here, coming around the outside of this, and then out the chimney. So you always want your, your like when you're connecting your exhaust, this, this slides into this, this slides into this, this tube slides into that tube as a, on its way out. So technically this works that way. Um, I don't think it's that critical to be perfectly honest with you. I think it's going to seal up nice and tight. Um, either which way, even if it was on the inside, but it's on the outside. And it's going to work. It's going to work great. And that's it. So I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Um, I'm going to get this, all this video put together tonight. And then I'll, I'll wrap this up tomorrow and hopefully I'll be firing this up tomorrow. Again, it depends on the perlite situation. So, um, like always, thanks for watching. Um, subscribe, comment, like, and stay tuned because we've got some stuff going on with Project Pathfinder as soon as I'm done wrapping this up. Um, roof rack, some other stuff as well. So, um, check out the links in the description. Um, go like me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter if you use Twitter. Check out the website and check out the links to, to my Everlast Power iMig 200 and my Everlast Power Plasma 50 as well as this compressor I'm using to supply it with there down in the description. Um, if you guys choose to purchase them, any of those through Amazon, it does help me out. Again, they do not sponsor me, um, but I'm an Amazon affiliate so if you click on any of those links that go to Amazon that are in my description and you buy anything within 24 hours, it helps me out. So it's nothing but a click for you guys um, if you're planning on purchasing something anyway. So thanks for the support, and I will talk to you guys soon.